Blah, y'all already know what it is. Your boy Yako, what it do? The outlet to reality, the whole is Paul Cast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. <laughs> Don't like, share, comment, and subscribe. Ching, ching. Just kidding. But, anyways, fans, <laughs> thank you for staying tuned. Today, we have a very special, special guest who's one of the best directors I met in vegas and also a tiktoker give it up for naomi what's up girl what's up what's up thank you so much for having me today david that of course anytime <laughs> oh man well for my fans out there i do want to share a really nice story that i could remember with naomi so pretty much we have a lot of rehearsals throughout the week and one day i came up with this idea i was like you know what how about we have everybody together on a saturday night Let's, you know, me at my place to have, you know, rehearsal, have a good time. So Naomi comes first. She's like one of the first people here. I ain't gonna lie. I'll be real. When she's a director, she got her hat on and she'd be like, all right, can, can you do it again? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and she don't play around. She don't play around. She for real. And, and I like that she's very blurry. If I don't get criticism, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The best part. After the whole rehearsal, you know, we're taking a few shots. I was like, you know what? We should put some Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, and then put some merengue, that, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and Naomi, she's like, all right, cool. So I grabbed her, right? I'm like, Yo. and we're dancing, right? And I'm in my head, I'm like, maybe she don't know, you know, merengue, right? And she's moving, I could see it. And she's like, you didn't think white girl could dance. I was like, ah, you know what? You shocked me. You shocked me. You know what I'm and, and it was so funny because at the end of the dance, right? Because I'm I'm thinking already ahead of the song. I uh I actually did a dip on Naomi, right? Almost like Beauty and the Beast. And then she, she was like, <laughs> she was like, I don't let nobody dip me. I said, I know. I'm different, you know what I said? Yeah, I'm different, yeah, I'm different. Pull up in the <laughs> But that's one of my favorite memories. I ain't gonna lie, one of the best times of my life. And, and Naomi, for real, what was your impression when you first met me? Um, well, I got a lot of different first impressions when I met everybody. You know, we did all meet a um, stage rehearsal. So everyone was kind of already on the seats or anything. And I was kind of walking my way up, meeting everybody. Um, but with you, I got like a very, like you were in a, what was it? Like kind of a tux situation where you were like in a suit. And so I was like, damn, like this, and like, am I gonna, am I gonna, is he's like low key comedian? Like, what is this? You know, he's a suit, you know, you don't expect a lot from a man in a suit. And I was just like, well, okay. And then he gets on stage and I'm like, this motherfucker's loud. I was like, God damn. <laughs> and I just thought it was really funny. And I was like, he's going to have a really good, strong, confident character because of his, like, he's just portrays himself very strong and confidently. And then I got to know you on that, like, one night we all got together at your place. And I didn't know you were this hilarious. Like, you're like, I have a podcast. You're like, show me your TikToks. Your, your TikToks with Chucky are one of my favorite ones. Like, <laughs> you were just very hilarious and as I'm getting to know you more like my first impression was right yeah he may seem like this very upfront professional man but let him just show you a couple tricks up his sleeve and you'll see how comedic he can be <laughs> much love I love that thank you thank you <laughs> oh man now girl real quick I, I do want to pick at your brain a little bit so so my fans to know a little bit more of you and your fans to tell us a little bit like what what got you moving to Vegas, right? Was it somebody that influenced you? Was it the flu? Was it the boo? Was it the the who? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a plethora. Let me tell you, David. It was, I had a lot on my plate and I come from a very small farm town up in Northern Nevada, up in the Ruby Mountains. And so like, there's not much for people up there unless you intend to stick with the mines or, you know, want to be a farmer or a teacher or work in some governmental position. Like there wasn't much going. So uh, my parents at the time were just like, yeah, let's push you out down to Vegas. You know, like there's bigger things, bigger, brighter things, a lot of job opportunities. Um, and I really wanted to get into acting and my further my career. 
Um, and Vegas was like the best way to do it because it was close to home. But I also had those connections to Hollywood and Los Angeles and New York and things like that. So Vegas is a very good starting point for anybody looking in, you know, like on the West Coast to not be within all of those pressurized um, social stigmas like Hollywood and Los Angeles is. This is a very good like gateway into that area. So Vegas is just a very safe environment for me to grow and start. I love it. Love it. Ooh, good answer. I like that. I like that. Now, I, I do want to know, how did you... So, for those who don't know, me and Naomi are going to be in one of the biggest places here in Vegas. It's called the Muddle Murder Compton Menar. I think I said the last part right. Hopefully, hopefully. Oh, I did it! <laughs> it's just like you and a couple of the words. <laughs> like, order. <laughs> it's like, it's man. A muddled murder at Compton Manor. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's so funny. See, I'm telling you guys, she, she knows me real well. I got to watch out. You know what I'm saying? You know watch out. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I'm really curious because when I met you the first time, I remember you were really quiet in the, in the stage, right? And I'm not going to lie. You were dressed up like in a really nice blouse. You know, you're really tall. So I'm thinking she's a lawyer. She's making sure that nobody's messing up. So she ain't got to sue nobody. <laughs> and I was afraid to ask a question because she might say um, uh, objective. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was a little scared. I was, I was sweating a little bit because I don't really talk to lawyers. You know what I'm saying? And in the movies, they always depict the lawyer really tall pretty you know what i'm saying with nice blouse so oh did i look intimidating i mean, I you're, mean about, you're about to put my ego that much high i'm like dang man look at me go <laughs> oh man uh, i'm glad i'm the first it's because you know what to be honest you're very mature for your age you you have this persona i don't know what it is but like I could tell you're like a strong fighter. I don't know how. I don't know who who taught you this, but like like have that in you, which is a good thing because you don't look like a very you don't get scared a lot. I don't think. I, I feel like you you you've been through a lot that made you so like this. <laughs> you see, <laughs> so <laughs> lock it up like a hook. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely me. I hold out everything. And my biggest motto is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Like everybody you talk to in your entire life will have some traumatic event that had happened to them that had shaped them to where they are today. You know, I'm no different from anybody else you meet on the street. I've had my fair share of trials and errors and a lot of trauma that's happened, but I don't dwell on them. I take them as life lessons. I learn from them and I use that as an opportunity to get better. So with all that maturity you're seeing, it's just me understanding that things happen, but you still wake up tomorrow and you're breathing. So what are you going to do with what happened? You know, what are you going to make out of it? Are you going to complain about it? Or are you going to like, have that to benefit your life? Oh, oh, I love that. I love that. That's deep <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I, that's why I had it. I had to bring you here, girl, because I, I love your energy. I feel like you're a great storyteller. I already know that. Oh, step, oh, step. Hey, hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, girl. No, but for real, I, I'm really happy you're here. You don't understand. And, and I want to ask you one little thing. Uh, how did you meet Rebecca? Like, what got you part of this production? Um, so I actually, uh, I've never done anything film, um, related. I've always ever done theater since I was five, always musical theater or just plays. Um, so I got this call for a commercial audition at the studio group and I was like, cool, never done one before. And it's in the next 16 hours. So I better learn what I'm supposed to learn. And so I show up, I'm nervous. I'm like shaking and I'm like trying not to bother anybody, you know, and Rebecca's sitting over there and she has my resume and she's like looking at it. She's pointing at me, talking with somebody. And I'm like, oh my God, they hate me. Like I have no experience. They're like, what is this noob doing here? Get her out, you know? And uh, she like starts to walk over at me and I'm like sitting there, I'm like clenching my butt. I'm like, oh, no, she's going to tell me to leave. And she comes up and she goes, so I have this play that I've been doing. And she goes off on this rant 
uh, this tangent of why she wrote it, you know, for her class that she's coaching for all of the um, film actors trying to get into theater or those, you know, just coaching on the theater side of things um, to help better them. And she said, it's kind of turned into more of just a coaching class. We have an actual play that we're putting on for a charitable function and all of the money raised from it is going for a cancer foundation for the, ca the cancer research foundation. And I was like, well, I, I identify that a lot. Like I just lost my dad to cancer, not just eight months ago. Um, so I was like, I, you know, I'm really, I really want to help support. So is there anything that I can help you, you know, volunteer work, you need a stagehand, you need someone to do, you know, props or this. I was like, I be a part of it to help you, you know, have this be a very successful fundraiser. And um, she was like, yeah, I'll come on as a script prompter. Um, I'll show you the crew. You know, this is great for you. Um, just observe getting that experience under your belt too. And I was like, you know, 100% anything just showing up and watching is the best, you know, experience in my head that you can ever learn. Um, besides from physically doing it. So I could just kind of asked me to come on and um, I offered help. And then from there, it kind of progressed into becoming one of the directors and as well as playing one of the characters on stage. So I truly believe good things come to those who wait and um who are very kind and put things out into the world and manifest like good things will come good things will come so i like that i, I really appreciate that you sharing that and uh i'm happy to have you part of the you know the team the production has improved a lot because now we know who's serious and who's not i'm gonna be real so we need that we need that toughness right there and, and you got it you got what it takes and I do want to say uh, for everybody out there, the play is so funny. One of the funniest plays. Um, I've heard it so many times. So, like, I laugh a lot. But I got to say, a good time. It's like a crime, a drama slash comedy. Everything you need, we got it. It's straight up a slack, slapsticks comedy dinner theater. Like, if you're looking for some good food, some good laughs, and then you get to go home, you got a little tipsy, a little drunk, maybe got to call the DP, you know, come get you. It's going to be a blast. And everybody, I believe, should come. The play itself is free, but the dinner is going to be $15 a ticket. And all of the money does go to the Charitable Foundation of Cancer Research. So it's all for a good cause, but it's also good entertainment, too. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, it's June 24th. 30 p.m. So don't be late because we're going to get mad. <laughs> doors, and, doors will be shut. <laughs> now, girl, I, I do got to ask you something a little personal, right? A little personal. And, and I want to ask you, what do you think is what people are? Because I know your stuff is really funny. You know, you're very comedic very i love like your stories and, and you post it just makes my day because i'll be bored at work sometimes but i don't know what's what it's like boop, and i get a note no, your friend said i uh, posted something and i'm like ding, ding. so i go ding. You see? <laughs> so I, I gotta ask girl what what do you think captures people's attention because i know your video one of your video went viral i ain't gonna lie yes um so for if it comes like just as a TikTok or just in general, like what catches people's eyes to watch you to like keep that like follow button, that subscribe button that, you know, I'm going to hang on to this person and try to get to know their lives and be a part of it. Um, a lot of it is consistency um, and it's to connect with your fans as if, you know, what we're doing here as if we're FaceTiming, you know, one on one not just with millions, but with one-on-one, -on -one. you have to make that connection and that feeling, even if it's just through funny videos, you know? Um, and so you just have to, stand, it, it stems a lot from confidence and having your material ready to go and um, just your character enough of itself and adding you to it to make it real and not seem like you are just some AI who's getting paid to get likes and follows and fame you know like that now is becoming such a oh that's such a last year thing you know where now we want real people and we want to see the real stuff because we've been given nothing but two-faced fake things for years and people are done with it now so i try to live life as real as possible because i'm nothing but who i am so you can't ask I like that. I like that, Gary. You know, I, I, I 
I feel it. And also, I do think it's cool that tickets, you can, um, I feel like, it's very true. Like for me, I like to put dance. I like to put like me teaching martial arts, you know, different stuff that shows a little bit of part of me. So if people want to learn, they can. And I do. I'm not going to lie, girl. I do want to do a collab with you. Like one of these days, we, I want to get together and do like either like a, a workout video. Like, you know, I show you different stuff with the pads. And do a little merengue thing, 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 thing you know, because you, you already see my style. <laughs> and, and if we're going to do that, then I get to show you my swing dancing, my two steps, my everything, because we just go down this Hispanic road, go down the white girls road. OK, I got the old country. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I got my country hat and I got my boots. So you let me know. I get that. You see, you see. <laughs> Oh man, because you know Mexicans. I don't know if you know this, but Mexicans, their culture, yeah. it, well, it's a, it's, they're ranchers, they're farmers as well. No, for sure, but they don't know our two step. I got. We like don't. Step. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but I do. I do think we we have a lot in common. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you already know, we like to ride horses. You guys like to ride horses. The music is different for sure. Don't get me wrong. Music is different. It's a language. Maybe that about it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're pretty similar. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, girl. So you already made me sweat. See, that's that's why the thing, man. When you got Lauren right here in front of you, you start sweating. You <laughs> see? Cool. So look, I got a, a really, I always do before I finish the episode, I do have a, have a good question. Um, it's like, I call it kind of like uh, my last 10%, right? So pretty much, how do you feel when people give you compliments, right? For guys, for example, right? Guys, we get compliments every day. Maybe we get one once a year, but we don't really get compliments. Even growing up as a kid. We never got anything like, man, you look, your eyes look nice or your hair. We, we, it's just not part of the stigma because we're always taught, stop crying. You're a man. And it's very different. It's like so different. But I know for a woman, I feel like you get a lot of compliments. It could be you could be going to the grocery store or even going to work. You'll get a compliment here and there. So what I'm trying to ask you is like, what's a compliment? that you feel that it's not like like creepy you know because you do get i bet you get comments that are like uh, you, you you make that cringe uh. and i mean any girl does um and i think it's sad that guys don't get that my family are always raised to you know say what's on our mind and i'm like well i got nothing but all nice things to say so i'm like always oh, out here commenting on guys here and i'm like why the hell are your eyelashes better than mine why you know, like <laughs> things like that. When I'm taking compliments from people, um, you know, like if it's just like in passing, it's a stranger and they're walking up to me because I like to go walk the strip all the time just for like exercise. It's hilarious. It's fun to watch all the crazies out, you know, like it's fun people watching. I do get talked to a lot and I do get, you know, I get females who do come up to me and they're like, oh my God, your eyes are really pretty. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you doll. Like that was really kind of you. You didn't even have to come out of your way to tell that to me. You Kept that in your head and you you know decided to voice that that's very kind of you. um but when it's like deliberate where they have to come across the entire room and it makes you uncomfortable because you can tell they have determination to come talk to you and you're like oh my god what happened and then it's some creepy like damn baby mama you real fun as hell you got a boyfriend and i'm like is that really how you want to start this conversation like you have nothing better nice to say like damn mama but like you could be like, hey, pretty girl, you look real nice tonight. You having a good night? Like, be very kind about it and just chivalrous. It doesn't have to be automatic, like abrupt and aggressive in a sense. And that's kind of what I've noticed down to Vegas. It's it's a lot of aggressive sense. And I'm like, like thank you. <laughs> and then you wave and go away. I mean, I, I try to take them as nicely as possible because, you know, you never want to offend somebody because they, you, maybe they don't know how they're delivering it. And maybe, you know, they think they're being really kind about it. And so you kind of want to go in it with like a kind 
toned as well. But there's that aspect of read the room. And if you don't read the room, do you have common sense? Like, and it's just like that little small like domino effect where I go down and I spiral and I'm like, maybe you're not the person I should be talking to. And I walk away, just be very logical about it. I mean, they just tend to be very kind and walk away. I just each it's a, it's a case by case situation. Wow. Okay. Okay. I like that. And, and, and real quick, what's your, what's the best compliment you've ever heard? Could remember that's like, man, that was, that was real smooth. Um, I can't say if it was like a flirtatious compliment or anything, um, but uh, I made high expectations choir is like this huge ordeal in my hometown. I have to audition to get into it or whatever. And once you audition, you have more opportunities to go to like the state level of choir. And I remember I had made all state choir for Nevada three times um, in three different years. Um, I remember the board of directors came up to me afterwards because like they had like a good connection with my choir conductor um, and they had work um, throughout this past two months on this and getting the Latin phrases right and things like that. And she came up to me and she grabbed my hand and she held it very softly. And she said that she really appreciated all of the hard work and determination that I put forth for my vocal abilities and that I came in not knowing what like a fourth note was or like certain beats were and I would get frustrated and I'd be almost on the brink of tears because I'd be mad at myself not knowing what to do and then I would go ask somebody for help and you know would well on it and be like oh well, I'm never gonna get it you know like I'd find the problem and I'd fix it and I'd ask so when she came up she expressed that to me and I've never had anyone just be like, your hard work was noticed. Like somebody noticed your hard work. And it, it's just stuck with me my entire life that no matter what I do, even if I think nobody's watching, somebody's watching and somebody might say something or they might not. And you also might inspire somebody else to do something better. You know, be like, look at that person, look at how hard they're working. Um, and they might do better. So that one comment that always stuck with me that always helps me push through. Like when I'm having a really hard time getting something done, um, I just sit back and I'm like, you know, somebody's ought to notice whether they say it or not, you know, what, regardless of if anybody sees it, I'm going to do the hard work. So that way I know it wasn't my fault on my end of things kind of things. But yeah, sorry. Off topic. Wow. Love no, it. No, that was good. I, I love stories. So I, I was like, like you say, I was trying to find my popcorn. You say, you say. No, but you, you did really good. I like that. I think, I think it's very true. Um, you know, sometimes like that compliment was really nice. What that lady said to you, very, very nice, very powerful. It stuck to you. I was thinking too, like for me, I'm very goofy. I'll be coming up with different ideas on the spot. Like I remember one time I was at the grocery store. And I feel like you would get compliments on your comedy all the time because you are serious and you do make people laugh and you have that tendency to make people just feel warm and welcome and just like, yeah, let's have a good time. That's true. I got to be careful. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I got to be careful. I, I'm going to tell you a funny story. This happened to me real life. So um, there was two pretty girls next to me. It was at this famous club in Vegas called Blue Martini, one of the best spots ever. And I went there and I saw them right away. And I'm I'm just playing cool, right? I'm, I'm not really trying to spit game, which I am. But I was, I, I was really, you know, just sitting down drinking my drink. And so the girl looks at me and she goes, uh, so, so what, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm actually the DJ for Blue Martini. And she goes, no way. She's like, what are you doing here? I said, well, actually today's my day off. they making sure my team is doing good today. You know? Oh man, that's crazy. Like I remember that dropped. It was just like, like, wow. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in guessing the whole story is now real, by the way. And so she believed it. And she's like, let me buy you a drink. You you were amazing. Let me just get you a drink. I'm like, cool, girl. You know, she asked for my drink. My drink and then she was like, you want hookah too? I said, I'll take anything. And so she got me a hookah, 45 bucks. I said, all right, cool. Keep bringing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And she was like, and then when the music got better, I was like, all right, this is my special time to shine. 
So I heard some music. I said, hey, girl, you want to dance? She said, oh, oh, yes, of course. With the DJ, I, I got him. <laughs> so that's the thing about me. So I actually improv. I'm saying, say, break it down, break it down, break it down. Hey. <laughs> so this is the thing about me. I come up come from on the spot. I'm testing actually my skills. And I noticed that if I tell a story and it's so good and it's engaging and it's funny, they'll buy it. And most of the people, I'm going to be real. If you go to the club, most of these people from out of town, they don't know your backstory. They don't know who's your ex. You know, they don't know anything. And it's kind of funny. It was like a little fun game. But, you know, I, I got one more story. One more story. I got shit. this. One more. That's it. That's it. So there was one time it was a bunch of people. It was in, back in Chicago. And it was a famous club. It's called The Mine. The floor is a big spot. And the crazy thing, there was one pretty girl all the way in the back. back curly hair. And seven guys go up to her and watch this. Seven. And all the guys did the same thing. Hey, girl, let me get you a drink. They got her a drink. Ding. And then they, they um, <laughs> and she took, she took. And then the guy would say, hey, you want to dance? And she goes, good, but thank you. And all the seven dudes did the same thing. And they never got to dance with, with the girl. And my, your boy is different. Watch this. Your boy is different. Wait up. <laughs> so I come in. I come in all smooth. And I said, girl, you know, it's so funny that all these dudes bought you a drink and they couldn't get that one dance with you. And she starts laughing. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> and she, like, yeah, that's what they did. That's what she did. And so, <laughs> and so I said, and um, well, you got a lot of drugs, man. That's crazy. She's like, Yeah, do you want one? I'll say, Yeah, I'll take one. So I took it because I saw she didn't sip it. She got seven beers right there. So I took one. I was like, All right, cool, cool. And I said, Cheers, thing for those idiots. Ding, ding. <laughs> we cheered, right? <laughs> and tell me why she's laughing. She's, you know, she's, you could tell she's relaxed and comfortable, you know, <laughs> relax, take it easy. That's <laughs> it. I Oh, ain't nothing ever. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, oh, anyway. Nothing. <laughs> oh, man. I love that song, by the way. I love that song. And the crazy thing is we did, we did dancing. And she was like, wow, wow, the dance. And I said, girl, you ain't going to believe this. But uh, um, I'm being an instructor. She's like, oh, man, you teach? I'm like, yeah, but uh, to be honest, I don't charge the weekend, so you lucky today. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and see what I mean. I'm just, I'm just crazy, but I, I'm just showing a little thing how I feel like what I've learned. The best thing if you're gonna approach a pretty woman, don't, like you said, don't come off aggressive. Don't be like everyone else. I think if you are different. Um, they're going to respect that. Like, I feel like you have to, you have, and I stood out because I didn't do what everyone usually does. I just be myself, break the ice. And I think if I'm, what were you going to say? What were you going to say? Well, I was just adding on to that. I was thinking like the more or less, you know, you came off like a friend, like you came off, you didn't want to have her for one night, you know, kind of a thing. The other guys seemed and acted as if they only wanted her because she was pretty. And only wanted a one night stand with her. And that's probably why she was like, nah. And you came off as funny as like humble and kind. And she was like, I'm gonna give this man a chance because he treated me very kindly and with respect. Rest. Oh, look at that. That's why I need her as my lawyer. She she's gonna have my back. Yes, you know she got my back. You know what I'm <laughs> oh man. All right, girl. Well, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. This is the Outlet to Reality. The whole this podcast is in Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Ching, ching. And y'all know where to find me. I'm on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Instagram, the Outlet to Reality. My TikTok is at Yakov28. And my Snapchat is Take One Pass It. And Naomi, where can my fans find you? 
Um, you can find me on all sorts of different social medias. On Instagram, I am under Naomi Grace. Um, TikTok, you can find me under Gracie Lou One. So <laughs> I love it. Thank you, girl. Thank you.